Welcome to the Cybersecurity Competition Federation Show. I'm Dan Manson. I teach computer information systems at Cal Poly Pomona and serve as principal investigator for a National Science Foundation grant to help form an umbrella organization over cybersecurity competitions. The Cybersecurity Competition Federation can support the development of skill at a large scale by bringing cybersecurity competitions under an umbrella organization, which will help players of all ages and skill levels identify a point of entry into a continuum of cybersecurity competition experiences. With a focus on communication and promotion, the CCF maintains the autonomy of competition creators, supports their business models, and does not interfere with their sponsorship or funding sources. This week, we're gonna take a look at Franklin High School. Franklin represents the best of a cybersecurity competition team. Franklin High School has made the Cyber Patriot National Finals four out of the last five years and was the first majority female team to make the National Finals. One of the co-captains is in her fourth year in the finals for the third time and another co-captain is part of a family legacy. Let's take a look at the Franklin High School team. So we started in June. Yes, June. So by the time first round comes around, we are, um, we've are we been training for about three months at that point. Um, in the beginning, we trained two days a week. And then after first round, we moved to three days a week. And um, when it comes to the following round after that, we're going three days a week, four days a week. And then at this point, we're going five or six days a week. How many hours a day? Um, they get out of school at 3, so we train from whenever they get out of school till 6 or 7, and then um, sometimes I'll have meetings with the captains after that, so sometimes they will leave at 8 o'clock. We have, um, we communicate all night long. <laughs> what do you like about learning cybersecurity? Okay, well, first of all, it's applicable to, um, to life, and you, I heard you can also get a good job out of it, too. So, and since I come from a low-income family, I really want to help my parents with their bills and stuff. So that's why I, want, I took an interest in here. But not only that, is that I, I like learning about computers because they're just so interesting. How to can, you, can you walk us through how many in your family have, have gone to Cyber Patriot and who they are and when they went? Well, um, my first, the first one who went to the national finals was my brother, and that was four years ago. And then it was my sister, and she went twice, and now it's me and my younger brother. Yeah. This year you're a co-captain, along with Victoria. What is it like being someone who has to be in charge of the team? Well, um, it's pretty, um, it has a lot of responsibility because what I have to do is that it has, I have to create lessons for people, and being the person who actually know more about the finals than anyone else, I have to teach people all the things that, are, that were happening and what was going on, what to expect and what not to expect. So it was, it was a lot of responsibility, but I was able to get through. Well, I got started because of my siblings, but I stayed because I wanted to stay. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't have continued on for the rest of my three years, pretty much all of my high school life. What do you like about Cyber Patriot? I like how it's preparing me for the future. Like, it's all about technology and securing, and I, I just know that t technology is always advancing, so I want to be there and learn all about that. I'm extremely loyal to a cause when I believe in it. Um, what initially drew me to Cyber Patriot was that I saw this as a huge opportunity for our students. Um, it's something that is relevant. It is something that's important for the future it's you know it's very and it's innovative and I like that about it it's, it hasn't really been mapped out yet so you know um, we're, we're kind of making history as it goes along and I and I like that um, but I also see what it does for our students I don't think at that age they've ever been this dedicated to anything and so having that and having that in place for them and having them learn through that process has been exciting to see Jason, welcome back. Thanks, Dan. This week, uh, we're going to talk about some of the skills and the competencies in these competitions. 
I believe you developed a matrix that, that shows the activities in these competitions and what these competitions can do to develop competencies and, and skills. Absolutely, and the matrix is meant to be suggestive, not exhaustive, and it's meant to help somebody find either a competition to compete in based on the type of skill they want to develop, or if they want to develop a certain skill, that's the competition they need to do. So one of the skills that is popular these days is pen testing, and th there are competitions that can help you develop this type of skill, correct? Absolutely. When we look at pen testing as an art form or a skill set, we can decompose that down into procedural knowledge, process knowledge, which requires mm -hmm. a strategy type game, and it also requires systems thinking, looking at systems mm -hmm. as a whole and how they relate, and that mm -hmm. requires simulation. And a system administration skill is something that several of these competitions develop. If you're playing CCDC and you're on the blue team, if you're playing a Cyber Patriot type competition, this is a very valuable skill that this competition will help develop. Absolutely. In fact, it, it kind of reiterates the importance of the defensive competitions related to the offensive competitions. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, there's overlap between the systems and procedural thinking, but then the defensive competitions add on the puzzle type knowledge. Now, these skills are something that you're not going to develop playing one or two competitions. And if you really want to develop a rich set of skills, you should play a variety of competitions. Is that correct? I think that's the best advice to give anybody that's involved in cybersecurity competitions. Play as many games as you can, as often as you can. Very good. We're going to take a look at an upcoming competition uh, that was recently announced, the, the MITRE. Um, Cyber Challenge 2015 competition. This is a competition that's open to high school and undergraduate college students. I believe the registration is going to start in the uh, next several weeks. And this is a competition that is going to uh, occur over um, several months. But this is a, a competition that you've had some experience with. Yeah, it's an exceedingly well put together competition. And it's a well designed competition in the sense that it considers not only the learning objectives from like a high school undergraduate program standpoint, mm -hmm. but also the game design elements. And, and they, on their announcement, talk about specific skills that the competition will help you develop. Uh, binary exploitation, web exploitation, forensics, cryptography. So it's possible for a competition to develop several different skills. Absolutely. If we take forensics as an example, that's a common skill set that appears in lots of different types of competitions. And they have their own competitions that are forensics only. But those typically involve puzzle solving, and puzzle solving is a specific game strategy. Thank you, Jason. Thanks again, Dan. Tomorrow, February 13th, President Obama will give a major cybersecurity address at Stanford University. We would like to see President Obama do something just as important. Visit a cybersecurity competition and see how cybersecurity competitions are developing the cybersecurity skills our nation desperately needs. If you have a competition you would like us to cover in a future show, please contact us at cyberfed.org. I'm Dan Manson. See you next week.